Hi guys, welcome to my channel, I'm Chrissy. Today we're painting a beautiful peacock. Uh, I'm just getting in the background, I'm just using a nice wash of lime green. I'm just putting it on with a stiff brush and blending out any harsh lines I don't want with a mop brush. I'm working on 11 by 8 canvas, which is an A4 size. So I've let that dry and I've transferred my peacock on to my canvas. I'm just blocking him in with some maroon and um, purple, dioxazine purple. Then I'm just adding a bit more magenta as I go, but some are dark shadows, some are a bit in the mid-tone range. So I'm just working that in as I see fit where the lights and darks are going to be. It's just a normal Cronacodon magenta. Same here on his feathers, on his darker bits where his feathers are on his back. Same colour again, that maroon with some dark seam purple. And a tiny little bit of magenta now I'm working in. Now same colour here because I want to cover all that green up because I want a dark um, underpainting on the bird. Obviously so all my colours are going to show up nicely. I'm just blocking it in with that purple and maroon and a tiny bit of magenta. I'm working with a quarter inch angle brush today. So I'm just roughly blocking it in. I'm adding some cobalt blue here just to darken some of the shadows. So if you've got a reference, obviously you can follow that. Now he's got his head twisted, so I want to give that illusion he's got his neck twisted, so he's looking backwards. So I need some dark shadows in there so they'll uh, I can build up my highlights. I'm just using an off-white just to fill his little face in. Got a tiny bit of yellow, golden yellow in there, and some yellow ochre for his beak. Just using a number one round brush just to get them details in. So now I'm back to my angle brush. I'm using some brilliant magenta and a tiny bit of conacodone red. I'm just giving it a glaze of that red over. I've let the magenta dry. I'm glazing over them dark shadows just to blend them in a bit more. So I still want to see the dark values. So that's why I use the Quinacodone because they're quite transparent with the glazing medium. Any questions, please leave in the comment section. Um, I'll get back to you, obviously. Check every day. If you'd like to ask me something, I will answer to the best of my ability. And also leave me a thumbs up if you found this video enjoyable. I'd appreciate that very much. And you can subscribe also because I do live stream every Thursday, 7pm UK time on this channel. So if you subscribed and hit the notification bell, you will get subscribed and you you could come along and join in the live stream, which would be fun also. Everybody's welcome. Now I've let that dry and I've got on some of the eyes of the feathers in the on his back. So I've just put them in so I know where to go with them so it's a better guide than just doing it blind. Just to help me along a little bit. So I'm just using some magenta and some brilliant magenta, which is the normal magenta and then a brilliant magenta just to put them lighter tones in around the purple and same there on the side of his wings. Keep adding the dark values in because you do go over stuff so I like to co go back and forth, keep adding mid shadows in. So now I'm just using some brilliant magenta and some fluorescent pink. I'm going to soft blend them in as you can see there because I don't want a harsh line there in the dark shadow bit. So I build that up as you'll see further on in the video 
I'll use glazes just to soften some edges and to give that nice glow effect. Like there now with the quinacridone red. Just using the tip of my brush to get a nice soft blend. I'm just working some detail here on the smaller uh, feathers that he's got on his back. I'm just using that lime green, but I've just muted them down uh, slightly with a little bit of purple, so I don't want them too bright. Again, I'm concentrating on keeping that a nice soft blend there, so it all joins into one. But it'll still give the illusion that he's got his neck turned. Angle brushes are great for this because you can get in all the little nooks and crannies. Plus, you can use the back side of the brush. As you can see here, I've got the brush actually turned the other way. I'm just using what they call the toe of the brush, which is the pointy bit. Just add these little details in. So I don't want to go over detail. I'm trying to keep it fairly loose. And this is just a nice violet colour I've mixed with some dark seam purple and some white. I'm starting to build up the actual feathers on the bird. But remember to leave your dark seams, you don't want to cover all them up. So pay attention to your reference if you use one. But if you do, like I said always, you can always come back and put them back in. I'm using a brilliant magenta and quinacridone magenta just to get the little eyelets. I think they're called eye, well, the eye section of the feathers and the lies. Not sure what the technical word is. Feather. And another layer there on his neck, which is the fluorescent pink and the brilliant magenta. So I want that quite bright there. And I think it's a beautiful complement colour to the background. Same again, I've got the lime green, the same colour used for the background. I'm just putting some of that in loosely. Just to build up my colours. I haven't gone too bright yet, just kept it quite thin, a thin layer. You can still see the purple underneath. And the same again, I'm just going around with that purple again. I'm just giving it another layer just to darken some values and lighten some. Then back in with the magenta pinky colour I used on his neck. Just shaping them in, which the angle brush is great again. You can just do that nice little scoop shape with it. They're awesome for that. And then back in with a lighter violet colour. I hope you enjoy this video guys if you do please leave me a thumbs up and also like I said you can leave me a comment if you have any questions that you want to ask and I will get back to you. You can also visit me uh, Facebook group if you'd like to join that the link for that's in the description box we have a great group there which can share your art and ask for any advice it's really friendly and wel welcoming. And there's also a link there for my website. If you'd like to browse that, you can do. I've got plenty of art on there for you to look at. So I'm going back in with a lighter green, the lime green again. So we did one layer, so I'm coming back in with another layer, just brightening, brightening it as I go by adding a tiny little bit of white and yellow. I've let that dry, now I'm coming over with some teal. So I think these colours go beautiful together with all the pinks, the purples and the greens. So I wanted to do them this colour, beautiful pink. 
pink purple peacock. <laughs> That's a mouthful. But they are beautiful birds, aren't they? And they're nice to paint. Now I've come to my liner brush. I'm just putting some feathers in. Just with that lime green again, but not too bright. I haven't added any white or uh, yellow to it. I watered it down quite well with some glazing medium and a tiny bit of water just to get it flowing nicely off the liner brush. This will just give that extra detail into the feathers. Make sure all your purple's dry because you don't want your green mixing into your purple. It's just nice to add a bit of detail into your work, I think. As well as doing the nice loose paintings, that's also nice and creative as well for your brain to connect to. I think it just depends what mood you're in for detail. And uh, sometimes you want to do detail. Sometimes you just want to relax and do something loose and free. But it's nice to mix up your art, keep your uh, creative juices flowing as such. And always try to paint things that you're interested in. Like I love doing animals. You'll see on my videos, if you go through uh, my playlist, I have a lot of uh, animal tutorials there. Also, you can save, make your own playlist and save your own paintings in there, obviously. Now I'm going lighter now. I've just added a bit of yellow to that lime green. Just a tiny bit of cadmium yellow. I'm just going in with another layer. Still with the liner brush. And can you see it's starting to come together really nice because you've got the nice values underneath. Now I have added a bit more yellow. I'm going lighter and lighter with each application. Same around his face, just doing some little details there around his eye and make sure I've got some shadows under his beak there. So everything shows up nicely. Just maybe you need to come back and just add a bit more shadows. That's fine because you can just let that dry and come back with your, another mid-tone. Just been a little bit of lighter yellow. So I'm adding some titanium white. Just so his eye sh shines up a bit more and the end of his beak. Because you've got the contrast of the green. so. You need it just a little bit lighter than that value you've got on your background, so it will show. I added a bit of orange. I thought that were a nice little touch, because that just made it glow a bit more. Back with my teal colour, so I'm just putting some more feathers. Now, I'm not layering over the, all the green I put in uh, previously. I'm just going over some of it. And remember to wash your liner brush out regular because it does dry pretty fast. Just to keep your brush nice and, and fresh and working properly. I'm using more of that lavender colour. So I've gone a bit lighter, I've added a bit more white. Now we've just got a bit of deep green. I'm just putting some feathers on the outside to make it more natural looking. Still with a liner brush, just flicking some feathers here and there. And I go in with a lighter greeny yellow. Some contrast. And doesn't it look beautiful with all them beautiful colours? 
think they're wonderful creatures to paint and I hope you create something wonderful today guys and if you are in the Facebook group please you know share your art like you do it's always wonderful to see everybody's artwork I'm going back in with that fluorescent pink and some brilliant magenta I'm making sure I've got that nice soft blend though at the edges so I don't want any harsh lines so very little paint so you can do a nice soft blend make sure you just a tiny little bit of paint on your brush and I'm going in with the same colour just on his feathers again to make them pop out in the centre that beautiful pink colour A bit of dark in the middle again, so I'm just going back with my purple so I don't lose the dark centre of the feathers. I hope you've enjoyed this, guys. Please leave me a thumbs up if you have, and consider subscribing, and I'll see you soon. Bye.